Hello everyone, Benny here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the, our friend, the graphical processor. So, oh, I have gone ahead and built this, and I'm going to show you how this thing works before you actually build it, and the reason for that is this, well, I think it's going to be something that's going to be a lot easier to understand once you have seen how it works than it is to just, you sort of just build this huge complicated device and you're just going, Huh? Why is he doing that? I, I don't get it, but so, so that's the reason I've gone ahead and built this. That's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about showing you how a graphical processor works. We're not going to show you any of the technology, we're just going to talk about using it in this video. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin now. Just first of all, let's look at our control panel. We have eight wires over here. These represent our Y num numbers. It takes eight bits. These represent our X numbers, it takes 8 bits. And these are our four commands. Draw, fill Y, fill X, and erase. Now we also have these two wires, this is because the graphical processor, in fact, let me just clear these, uses registers to store the X and Y coordinates that it's currently processing. Of course, it doesn't update it until you give it a command, but it just remembers them so that you don't have to worry about having the input there every single time that it could possibly need it. So it's just sort of a convenience thing. So, yeah. So let's just go ahead and start with the most basic usage. The most basic usage is to pick one X number and one Y number, and of course save to the register. I, I always love to forget that for some reason. Now I can turn them off. Now it has a graphical processor, it has the numbers we sent in, so let's just hit draw. And we get a single pixel on the screen. I can go ahead and turn draw off now because it does remember it and I can go ahead and write something else here if I want. It's not going to update until I put in a different number. So if I put in a different X and a different Y number and save it to the GPU and hit draw, then I get another pixel on the screen. That's the most basic way to use a graphical processor. Is to just have one on each row and then just work it like that. So now I'm going to use the erase command and clear it. And I just did some work on this. So this, I, I just did some work on the erase command, so it might be slightly buggy. But hopefully, we're going to have all the erase command bugs worked out by the time we actually start building it. So now let's go to the next, the next stage of usage, having two on each side. This produces a slightly different thing with a graphical processor. If I hit draw now, it's going to give us something I like to call the selection box. But it doesn't draw anything, and the reason is, silly me, we've got to save it to the register. Hmm. So, draw, and there we go, we get our selection box. And what we can do with the selection box is we can use the fill X and fill Y commands with this. Because, I mean, one pixel won't do anything, but now we have a selection box. We have an area selected. So we want to do something like just fill in the whole area. I want to fill in both. And if I have a hit draw, boom. I have a full square. So, there we go. I've got a completely filled in square now. So now I can go ahead and hit race. And it all goes away. And yeah, I, like I said, race command slightly buggy not entirely sure what's going on here I f I think this might be the issue Okay, now I got. Yeah, again, I have the race command slightly buggy. Oh well, we want this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and redraw. And now, let's work on the fill Y and fill X command. Or excuse me, now let's make a hollow square. So the way I do this is first fill Y and draw, and then fill X and draw, and that gives me a hollow square. So, and those are the really the two different shapes you can make with this. You can also make bars going across if you want by just using one of these, but those are how you make squares. 
And of course, you can't really process anything other than squares because, I mean, come on, this is Minecraft. Everything's either a square or a cube. So, <laughs> that's the reason we don't have circles or anything other than that. So let's pray that this works. It actually appeared to work really cleanly. Oh, no. Still getting... Actually, hang on. I think I have to clear the registers every time I erase with this setup. Okay, that... Uh, yeah, I, I dare say that did not help us. So I'm sorry that I'm making this video with the erase command from hell. This is actually a bug because I screwed up the redstone really early on and I didn't feel like rebuilding it, so... When we build this, it will not have these... Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do it the way that I knew worked, and that was having the draw and erase commands separate. The way this works is I hit erase, wait a moment, then I hit draw, and it should clear the screen. And then I take them off in the same order. And I think I might have just permanently screwed this thing over. Oh no, hey, there we go, finally. So, again, erase command, slightly, <laughs> j just a tiny bit buggy. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That will be fixed <coughs> by the time you actually build this. So now, so that's the more, I guess you could say, the processing end of how to use it. It also can do another type of processing, known, it can do a rendering. And that's not explicitly listed because it's more of a com combined effort. So, what that is, it's called scan line rendering. The way this works is you first you select the first Y coordinate, and that did save. And if this actually works, I can do something like this for X, send that in, and hit draw. And what that does should not be that. Erase. Ah, uh, you gotta be kidding me. Mm. Erase command, tiny bit buggy. Come on, why is this... Why is this not working? Yes, yes. Hmm. I can do a manual erase. The way you can do that is just turn everything off. Right. Turn everything on. Right. So this is like, I'm just doing the command override because erase command is failing me right now. But I did get sort of like a giant, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me, why is this happening? I'm sorry, I will be back in a moment. Okay, we're back, and actually what had gone wrong is in that time when the erase command that I had sort of like improvised at the end there, before I had fixed it by breaking that redstone, yeah, when I was playing with it like that, what it had done is it had caused some pistons inside the tower back there to drop their um, the blocks that they were supposed to be holding. So I just put them back, and now it's working just fine. So, I'm very, very sorry about the erase command completely spazzing out. Again, that will not happen on your end. So, let's go back to going over scan line rendering. So, the way we can do this is we can select a single Y location, select an interesting pattern with X, and then hit draw. And this gets us this. So now if I want to select a different pattern, like this, for example, and then I go to the second Y, and hit draw, I can... Oh wait, actually wasn't what I meant to do, I meant to actually draw this. So there we go, it takes the updated information. So it seems smart enough to know that I was trying to update the information. If I can go back to the original, I can do like that, and go to the next Y command, which will be free, I'm pretty sure at this point, 
hit draw and hey so see what this is I'll, actually I'll, I'll just go ahead and finish drawing this and I'll tell you about it when I'm done so again and for the next Y location same thing so get another Y location get another X pattern hit draw and finally and a Y location and hit draw and there you go we have used scanline rendering to create the number 12 on our graphical processor so that, let's talk a little bit about what we just did there aside from of course draw the number 12 on our graphical processing screen this graphical processor can do scanline rendering and what scanline rendering is is that's when you input all the pixel information for the X row and then for, for the bottom X row and then or the top X row just either the bottom or the top X row in this case the bottom X row so just it's a bottom X row okay it's the bottom X row <laughs> just <laughs> okay I, I, I'm sorry I should I, I should know better by now than to record these videos late at night but <laughs> anyways moving on so, oh, it, it it takes in to a the num a pixel information for the bottom row, and then it takes in the information for which r y row it is, and then it draws that and that one. Then it goes up one row, and then goes up, and then another and another. And that's why it's called scan line. It scans across every line iteratively and gets every single pixel information possible. It's one of the most basic forms of rendering, and in case you didn't know, rendering is rendering's a fancy term for the process of drawing an image so yeah and that's what it's doing that's that's how we can render complicated images with this such as the number 12 on our graphical processor <coughs> and that's really the most it's really how you use this if you wanted to draw but of course you don't have to use scanline rendering if you want to use a more advanced rendering algorithm that's also possible so if I erase this using the correct manner Boom. Then I turn off draw and turn off erase. There we go. Now erasing is working properly because I undid it, went back to the way that I knew worked. I was trying to make it just one command because I thought that would be more convenient. Turns out that doesn't work. Hmm. Oh well. Tough luck. So now if I want to do a more complicated rendering pattern, such as, well, let's select two Y locations. Let's select two X locations and that right there is just a quick switch I had to completely clear the, re the registers if I wanted to so now we've got a box around our entire screen so now if I want to now say I want to fill Y so this is an example of how we can use our our graphical whole commands to produce some interesting images and now what if I just took went back to just this one and set fill X and draw we get this interesting very very interesting shape that should not be happening um uh, oh it's because I took that out when I was trying to figure out what's going on. Now it should be. There we go. We've got a big giant the letter U. And <laughs> I just realized what this would end up being. <laughs> I'm debating whether I should do this. I, I, I'm debating on. Yeah. yeah you know what? <laughs> you, know, you know what? I'm going I'm to do it. <laughs> I, I'm going to do it. So if I go there and here. And oh, wait, wait. Hang on. Whoops. Wrong command. And it draw. 
we get the world's happiest smiley face. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is this was not what I intended to draw. I am sorry. But <laughs> oh my god. I, again, I should not be recording these videos really late at night because I get tired and I get a bit goofy when we're tired. So again, this proves that you can use different rendering techniques if you feel like working them out. But scanline rendering is the primary way we're going to do rendering for this thing. But um, yeah, that's the basics of how to use this graphical processor. So I'm gonna erase my super smiley. Oh, 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 that's what's causing us problems before. Got it. Move, draw, then move, erase. All right, all right. Whew, okay. So, anyways, um, that's uh basically the graphical processor. So, um, yeah. Thank you. See you in the next video.